This video lecture for Water in the West is going to be about logical branching with if statements. So um, this is something that um, at this point in the class we're going to be uh, doing a, a lab in which um, you're really going to be using these if statements to help uh, make a watershed wide estimate of snow water storage. And so we'll show how some of those if statements are going to be important in subsequent slides. But before we get into the material, let's go ahead and review the objectives for this, uh, this lecture. At the end of this video, you should be able to describe and apply the logic of if statements. We'll also sort of connect these if statements. And I, I want to make the case that you actually use if statements in the logic of everyday life um, without knowing it, right? So uh, that's just to underscore that you already know how to do this. It's just trying to distill it down into the syntax in which we use it in things like Excel and in other programming languages you might use for data analysis in the future, like MATLAB or R or Python. So, um, you know, Part of this is to reassure you that you, you already have an intuitive sense of this. It's just about putting that intuitive sense into the into the syntax. And then, you know, I also want to show, sort of show how you can nest these if statements and actually draw some real world analogies about how, you know, we as humans make complex if statements that, you know, are, are nested within other if statements. OK, so. Um, Let's start off with a simple example here. And again, this is connecting to, to um, real the real world um, and, and something that happens virtually every day, or at least you know maybe five times a week. Um, and this diagram also shows why we refer to if statements as uh, as branching decisions. Um, and if we if we look here, right? So um, here is kind of the Every if statement has a, a condition that we're being checked, and the outcome of that uh, condition being checked either has to be a logical true, so the answer has to be yes, that is true, or it has to be a false, right? And we're going to do different things depending on whether that conditional statement is true or false. So my conditional statement here is if the alarm clock is going off, Right, so if the alarm clock is going off is a true statement, so alarm clock is going off is true, then we need to wake up, right? So that is our, that is what we do if the alarm clock is going off. If the alarm clock is not going off, right, then we keep sleeping. So you can sort of see this, how this branches us in two different directions, right? So there's always a, the, the three elements of a conditional statement like this, a, um, an if statement is that you need a condition, you need something to do if it's true, and you need something to do if it's false. Okay. Now, syntactically, or using the syntax, how we represent that in a spreadsheet looks something like this, right? We have this, this key statement here, if, that tells uh, Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets, okay, I want to branch, I want to impose a logical step, and if we apply the this logic here, right, here's the three elements that we have included um, separated by commas. So here's our logical test, right? So this is our, our logical test, right? So is the alarm clock going off? And here is our, our instructions if that is true. So um, if, if true, do this, true, do this. And then there's another comma here that this is item three. And this is if false, do this. Right, so that's the structure of an if statement. Um, and it's largely the same across, um, you know, either Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. Um, 
you know, all all if statements sort of have to have this kind of structure, right? Because it is sort of a, a true branch. It has to have either a yes or a no. Um, if statements are very common, so I just happen to have um, a uh, a text editor open with some code. This is this is Python, right? Um, you know. If statements are structured in different ways in different programming languages, um, but they always sort of have you know some kind of statement, right? So if I'm highlighting here, let me change the the color here so I can show it a little better. Um, I'll use uh, we'll use let's see blue. Okay, all right. So here is my conditional, right? So I'm checking if this variable i, right, if this variable i is greater than zero. It's not important what i is, right? So that's my question. And if 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 that is true, if if i is greater than zero, do this. If true. And do this. if false. Okay, so um, again, you know, I'm not trying to teach you Python here, I'm just trying to show you that um, that if statements show up in all kinds of other other analytical places that, that you will see, right? So this is a, a, a very important concept um, that you will uh, you will encounter and and truthfully have encountered, right? So the point of this slide is just to you know, I just took some common occurrences maybe that, you know, I myself have encountered over the past few days or, you know, the, the past week. Um, and, you know, conditionals in, in real life are always something that, you know, we're, we're, we're checking and then we alter our behavior if some condition is, is met, right? So um, you open the refrigerator and, you know, you, you pull the milk out, you look at the expiration date, it's past the expiration date, you pitch it, right? Um, or you pour it down the drain. So the, the condition is, is the, is the milk past its expiration date, right? Um, if that is true, if that condition is met, then we need to throw it out. If it's not met, if that is false, right, then we can keep it, right? We keep it, we drink it, whatever. Um, okay, so if it's the first day of the month, Right, so you know if if day of month equals one, right? Then then if that is true, we need to pay the rent or mortgage, right? So we alter our behavior depending on the day of the month. Okay, so if the day of the month is one, pay the rent. If it is not the day of the first day of the month, then you don't need to. You can skip it, right? Okay. Um, finally, the one that gets used sort of very frequently is if it's going to rain, right? Like you look at the you look at the forecast, um, you yourself make some judgment about whether or not you feel it's likely to rain, and if you feel it's likely to rain, right? If you think that rain is probable, you bring that umbrella, right? If it's if if it is not, right? If if you do not think it's likely that it's going to rain, then you don't. So again. Um, there's a condition, there's something that we do if true, bring the umbrella, there's something that we do if it's false, which is not bring the umbrella. Okay, so um, the the next, um, this is an example um, of, of how we would apply a regression equation um, in the context of something that we are already doing and will do in the lab, right? So, so the problem here is that, um, in, in a study watershed that ranges in elevation from 2,000 feet to 9,100 feet, snow cover starts at 6,000 feet and a survey of sites with snow um, at sites where there is snow indicate that snow depth follows this equation. So the, the depth of snow, H sub S, is equal to 0 0.002 times the elevation minus 12.0, right? So this is our regression equation. Um, so what is the condition that we would be checking in our watershed, right? So this, this equation implies that we want to take some value of z, we want to plug it into this equation, we want to get an estimate 
of the snow depth. And so, but what, you know, what is sort of the key uh, condition here that needs to be met? Well, if we look back up in the um, description of the problem, we see that snow cover doesn't even start until we're um, at 8,000 feet in the watershed, right? So the way that we would pose an if statement in this case is to say that if Z is less than 6,000, right? So that's our condition. Are we, if for an arbitrary value of Z, for a value of Z that we are given as input, is Z less than 6,000? Because if Z is less than 6,000, right, we don't have any snow cover, right? So at, ele at all elevations, presumably between 2,000 feet and 6,000 feet, the snow cover is zero. So for any value of Z that we're given, we need to check, hey, is this less than 600, 6,000? If it's less than 6,000, the condition, that, right, if this statement is true, my snow depth is zero, right? Okay, if it is false, right, if this is false, it means that Z is greater than or equal to 6,000 feet, meaning this equation here is valid, right? So um, if, this is tr if this is false, if this statement fails, I can compute the snow depth using this equation. Okay. The other thing that I want to point out is, um, you know, you, you may have already seen, um, sometimes these are uh, sort of piecewise, um, these are defined piecewise in, in, math, in mathematics, right, in a math class, right? You might have seen something like um, a function defined this way. So h sub s, my snow depth, is equal to, and then we sort of have a bracket here, right? My bracket says that um, the snow depth is equal to zero, for z less than 6,000 feet, and it's equal to 0 0.002 times z minus 12.0 for z greater than or equal to 6,000 feet. Right, so you might have seen some equations defined this way. This is sometimes referred to as a piecewise function, um, and that really is just an if statement, right? So here is the condition that we're checking, right? And here is the value when this condition is met, and here is the value which happens to be a line equation when this value is met, okay? Okay, so um, I also want to sort of point out using a real life example that <clears throat> the the branch that we go down in an if statement can ultimately lead us to yet another if statement. And um, I want to point out a very salient and sadly uh, realistic scenario where we have a so-called nested if statement, right? So um, here's our, our uh, if statement that we had before. Again, this is our logical test. Our logical test is if the alarm clock is going off, right, so that's our logical test. Our value if true is wake up, and our value if false is keep sleeping. Well, this almost never happens this way. In fact, what happens is if this is true, if the alarm clock is going off, it usually sets us into a secondary a conditional statement, a secondary decision branch. And that is this one, right? Um, if the alarm is going off and you're still tired, right? Um, so this is a second condition. Um, then in fact, um, we, if we're still tired, if that is true, right? So if the alarm clock is going off and we're still tired, we're gonna hit the snooze button, right? So here's the second condition. Right, so you can call this like 1A, this is condition 1A. So if we're still tired, um, hit snooze. If we're not still tired, so if that's false, if this if statement fails, then we finally wake up, okay? So how would this look, right? If we were to type this into a spreadsheet, what is the syntax 
of this? And, you know, the answer is perhaps might might be like you expect it, right? Which is that basically um, our statement, if this is true, just sends us into another state if statement, right? So we just go into another if statement. So here is what that if statement would look like. So if the alarm is going off, so here's the logical test. If that is true, then we need to evaluate another if statement. And we ask, are we still tired? Right? And that has its own set of true and false values, right? which are that um, if, um, if, uh, if we are still tired, we hit the snooze button. If we're not tired anymore, we wake up. Right? And then there's this final value, and this is actually wrong. Right? This should be here, keep sleeping. Right? Keep sleeping. Okay, so this is this final, f f this uh, failure condition from our first, from our first if statement, right? So if the alarm clock is going off, if this statement is false, then we need to do this one, right? So you can see that literally, we just took, let me change the pen color here, just to emphasize this. We literally just took this if statement here, right? I'll keep consistent with red. And it became what we did if our first if statement was true, right? So that's how that is, is nested in. Okay, so let's do an example now um, related to this application of the regression equation. So this is largely the same uh, the, this is largely the same problem that we had before with a um, with a slight difference, right? So again, um, we're thinking about this study watershed that ranges in elevation from 2,000 feet to 9,100 feet. Snow cover again starts at 6,000 feet, um, and our survey of our study sites indicates that the snow depth follows this relationship, snow depth equals 0 0.002 times the elevation minus 12.0. It's the same equation from before, but we want to apply this now in a, a map of our watershed where we have gridded points of elevation. So it's like the elevation over you know, some small area represented by that grid cell. And the grid cells that are outside the boundaries of our watershed, right, so it's a grid, so it's a rectangle, but our watershed is not shaped like a rectangle. So the grid cells outside of the watershed are given this kind of placeholder no data value of minus 9999. Okay, so, so this is what this looks like, right? So here is our kind of grid of elevation points. These are actual, this is actual data that you'll use this week in the lab. So these are elevations in units of meters, right? These are elevations inside of our, um, inside of our watershed. But um, these locations here, right, this minus 9999, this just indicates that this point, this grid cell here, which represents an area on the Earth, a, a square cell, um, just falls outside of the watershed. And so if we're computing the amount of snow stored in the watershed, we don't want to consider these, these points, right? Okay. So again, what what would that look like okay so we want to apply this equation right outside um, we want to apply that make sure that we apply this equation only in sites that are above 6,000 feet in elevation and only at, at, at grid cells that are actually in our watershed okay so if I define this in that sort of piecewise function right so I'm going to say that my my snow depth is equal to, and I'm going to use this uh, this bracket here. So I'm going to say, OK, my snow depth is equal to minus 9999, which is no data, when z is equal to minus 9999. Okay, and now there's another branch here, right? So this branch here, 
has another branch. So um, my snow depth is equal to zero if h if z sorry is less than six thousand feet and it's equal to zero point zero zero two times z minus twelve if z is greater than six thousand feet greater than or equal to okay all right so how would I write this in terms of an if statement so it would look something like this I would say if Z equals minus nine 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 okay all right so I'm down here on this side of the branch so if that's true, if my elevation equals minus 9999, that grid cell is outside of the watershed boundaries. And so my snow depth is just also equal to this no depth value, no data value, right? So h sub s just equals minus 9999, okay? If it's false, if z is not equal to that no data value, then I enter this if statement, this branch here. Right, so I just have another if statement. So if z is less than 6,000, my snow depth will be zero, right? Otherwise, it will be, I'm gonna run out of space here. I'm gonna put an uh, ellipsis here. Otherwise, right, if z is greater than or equal to 6,000, my snow depth is equal to 0 0.002 times z minus 12.0, okay? And the important thing here is that um, I need to close these parentheses, right? So I have one open parentheses here, one, two, these need to be closed in that order, two, one, okay? So that's my nif, nif nested if statement, right, that will allow me to assess is my grid cell inside the watershed boundary? If it is inside the watershed boundary, is the elevation of that grid cell less than 6,000? If it is, the snow depth is zero. If it's greater than or equal to 6,000, we use our regression equation here, okay? Okay, so that's if statements. Again, I think that you already have an intuitive sense of how they work, even in sort of very complex um, situations where you're nesting if statements within if statements. Um, but you know, now we're just putting kind of the the spreadsheet or programmatic syntax to how they work.